Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to Hurricane Game Day. I'm Joe Zagacki, and our show is brought to you by Williamson Automotive. And happy holidays, everyone. The Hurricanes basketball teams are underway and playing very good basketball with conference play knocking on the door. Most recently on the women's side, the Hurricanes won the Miami Holiday Classic as Adrian Motley was named the most valuable player in wins over Coppin State and Maine. And Hurricane senior Jessica Thomas recorded her 1,000th career point in that victory in the championship game against Maine. On the men's side, the Hurricanes' most recent victories are against FAU and George Washington. Freshman Bruce Brown had a double-double against George Washington and senior Davon Reed, much like Jessica Thomas, he hit the 1,000-point career mark as well in the Hurricanes' victory over the Colonials. Coming up on our show, we'll hear from University of Miami women's coach Katie Meyer, plus Jim Laranega is straight ahead. But first, let's take a look back at the highlights brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. We'll get you back in the game. Welcome back to Hurricane Game Day, everyone, presented by Williamson Automotive. Time now to talk with University of Miami head coach Jim Laranega. The Hurricanes coming down the home stretch in non-conference play. One more game to go against Columbia, and then conference play begins against North Carolina State. And uh, coach, so far, so good here in the non-conference season. Coming off two good wins recently against FAU and also George Washington. Yeah, Joe, I, I think we've learned a lot about ourselves uh, over the last several weeks. Uh, we've settled in on a starting lineup for one, with Jaquan Newton at the one, Davon Reed at the two, um, Bruce Brown playing like the one, two, three, and then uh, Dewan Yule and Kamari Murphy up front. And then we have Anthony Lawrence, DJ Vasilovich, and, and Buka Zundu coming in off the bench, and then Rodney Miller backing those guys up. So our rotation is good. We kind of understand our roles. We're getting a little bit better. Uh, the other night against George Washington, we had 10 assists and only six turnovers. You know, Joe, that's a big improvement from the 19 turnovers we had earlier in the season. I think that uh, drill you put them through where if you run out of balls, then you start to, uh, to run during practice. I think that drill worked. Well, the Toby drill, turnover, ball elimination, every time we turn one over, not only do we eliminate a ball, but the guy who turned it over has to do a sprint. So it reminds him how often he's turned it over. We had one player, I won't mention him by name, Joe, but he had three straight turnovers, and his teammates were like, hey, you got to quit that. We can't afford these turnovers. We're going to be running the rest of practice. And we haven't had to run yet because when it gets down to two or three basketballs, they really are smart about making good decisions. And I think that has shown in games. Uh, Jaquan Newton in particular has cut down his turnovers quite a bit. He had five assists the other night. Um, and, and that's half the assist that we had, including what I thought was the game-winning assist and around the back pass to Kamari Murphy for a dunk with just under two minutes to play. Uh, in that game, George Washington, uh, they did uh, stress your team a little bit. So that was good to see, right, in the way your team responded. Well, I, I think George Washington is similar to some of the teams in the ACC in this sense. They're big. They are very big. And uh, the Colin Smith kid, who's from Jacksonville, Florida, 6'10 or 11, playing at the 5. And then Tyler Cavanaugh uh, uh, at the 3-4. At the uh, they, they had a lot of size and caused us some problems. We played great for the first 13 minutes of the game, led 32-10, to 10, Joe. Right. By 22 points, it looked like we were going to coast to a victory. But they closed out the half on a major run, 17-0. And, uh, and then started the second half on a major run and uh, actually ended up taking the lead for a brief period. We called a timeout, uh, righted the ship, and I think our guys 
uh, did a good job of settling in and, and having some poise down the stretch. Two things with Davon Reed. One, the last couple of weeks, the last couple of games, he's been shooting the ball really well from three-point range, about 50% in the last couple of games. What did you do there to help him out? And during the course of that, he went over 1,000 career points. Yeah, great. 1,000 career points is kind of a benchmark of the, how good you are. You, you join an exclusive club. Uh, Davon deserves it. He's basically been a, a starter for four years. He's a jack of all trades. He can do a lot of different things. He's good defensively. He rebounds the basketball. He guards all different kinds of guys. He plays the two, three, and four for us at times during a basketball game. Uh, and what he's done is he's calmed down a little bit. I think early in the season he was a little anxious, rushing his shots. We weren't getting him the ball at the right time in the right spot. We've made some adjustments in our offense, and he's made some adjustments mentally. He's uh, playing with a great deal of poise now and, and uh, shooting the ball very well from both two-point range and three-point range. You have an Ivy League opponent up next, Columbia. Columbia, very much like the University of Pennsylvania early in the season, an Ivy League school. We like that association with the Ivy League. The University of Miami is a great academic institution. We want to be uh, competing against other great academic institutions. The Ivy League as a league is the number one academic league in the country. And guess who's number two? The ACC. The yeah. ACC is number two in the country. Think of the academic schools in our league, Miami, Duke. Carolina, Notre Dame, Boston College, Wake Forest, um, great, great academic schools, Georgia Tech, and I could go on and on. Um, the, the Virginia, who I didn't even mention, I should mention them, I coached there once. All, all these schools are terrific academically, all top 50 academic programs. So to compete against Columbia, they run a similar offense to Penn. And do you remember what Penn did, Joe, with all the passing and moving, the back doors and the threes? So our defense, again, is going to be challenged. We're going to have to take away the three, and we're going to have to guard those cuts, those backdoor cuts. Uh, the other thing I, that comes to mind when you play an Ivy League team or a team like this, you might run into a squad that is similar in the NCAA tournament should a team advance there. Last year, we're getting ready for the tournament game against Buffalo and Duke. They played Yale in the first round, and you, you could end up with a game like no, that. No, actually, Joe, Yale beat Baylor. That's right, beat in Baylor. In the first round. Right, right. So Baylor had to face an Ivy League team that really shared the ball and moved the ball and cut a lot and zoned them, and, and Baylor had a real problem with it. How good is Baylor playing right now, though? Top five in the country. Got a former but, hurricane there. Yeah, Manu LeConte is the, running the show there, a point guard, and uh, that's what he wanted. The reason he transferred from Miami is he, he couldn't beat out Angel Rodriguez. He knew it, and he wanted to go someplace where he could start and play 30, 35 minutes a game, and he's doing that at Baylor. We're very happy for him. Terrific young man. Okay, also coming up, we're going to begin the new year, actually end this year with the beginning of ACC play. And uh, on New Year's Eve day at 4.30 at the Wasco Center, it's uh, big, burly North Carolina State. Ooh. First of all, starting that early, even before the new year begins, is a little different. Uh, playing NC State, who just handled us, manhandled us last year at their place, they are a, a real challenge for us. We're not a big physical team. We're athletic, we're pretty fast, we're pretty quick, but we're skinny compared to them. <laughs> And, and, and that bulk really is a challenge for us. Then you have Syracuse after that uh, on the road, and Syracuse last year went to the Final Four. Syracuse under head coach Jim Beheim, a Hall of Famer. They play that vaunted 2-3 uh, defense, and uh, you got to be good against the zone to beat the Syracuse Orange men. I think you have to like the Big East actually at the beginning of the year. Syracuse, Pittsburgh, I think Notre Dame might be in there. Yeah, mix Notre as well. Dame too, yes, that's right. Right. We got our Big East opponents coming up. All right. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thank you, Joe. All right. That's University of Miami head coach Jim Laranega. We will continue on Hurricane Game Day right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Hurricane Game Day presented by Williamson Automotive. We now move on to University of Miami women's basketball with head coach Katie Meyer as we come to you first from the practice facility. Beautiful practice facility. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All the renovations in the offices and the facilities are just amazing. And it's working because now you've won 11 in a row. Right. That's all we needed. We just needed a new office space. No, it's been a real great streak in. And uh, you almost didn't want to break. You know, we were on great momentum. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll regroup and get ready for ACC. 
Okay, so you open the season at Kentucky in a hard-fought game. Right. You're only lost in the non-conference schedule. From that point on, you've had a lot of success and you've won in a variety of different ways. Exactly. What has stood out for you? I think our depth. I think that you script your non-conference to get you ready for what's coming in the ACC. And um, the games that we've won, the tough road games that we've won, it's been our bench. I mean, they've just come through. Our starters have been very consistent, very reliable, very trustworthy. And then the bench, there's six or seven people that have really given huge minutes for us. And uh, they make us a completely different team. So I, I would hate to be an assistant coach that has the Miami scout because it's, there's, you know, you got a lot of personnel you got to deal with. You won the uh, Thanksgiving tournament, and then right before Christmas, you won the Miami Holiday yeah. Tournament as well. That was hard fought. The championship game was against Maine, uh, but there were a lot of good things that came out of that tournament. Oh, amazing. I think the one is the reemergence of Adrian Motley. I think she felt healthy. She, her entire body, she was in a rhythm. She's loading up on her jumpers now. She's getting great lift. Uh, Jessica Thomas, great performance. A thousand, you know, on the day that you score your thousand, thousands points, you have seven assists and zero turnovers. You know, so she's a great scorer for us, but a seven to zero ratio is just incredible. That speaks volumes for the type of player that she is. Jessica Thomas has had at least five assists now in six straight games, at least four assists in 11 straight games. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, she scored 1,000 points for her career. What do you think the 1,000 points means? I just think it means, I think this year in particular, um, she's really beaten people with the pass. Uh, I personally had to force her to get her 1,000th point. I had to grab her and not tell her that what she was near, but I was, we got in a little fight on the sideline. It was fun. We hadn't fought since her sophomore year, but we got after each other, and she didn't know why I was so upset with her. I was like, shoot the ball. Like, I had to get, I wanted her to get it done before we started ACC, and she was sharing the ball so well, she looked at me like I was crazy, but I really wanted that goal for her in front of her fans. Her mom and dad were there. I wanted her to get it, and then, um, I called the three different plays, and then finally I said, just score. So that was the best call I made all night. Just score me two points. And then she understood what we were getting at. Going into ACC play, Motley is playing great. Right. Had a wonderful game against Loyola. Played uh, really well against FIU. Had a season high. And then nearly a, a perfect game. She missed one shot in the in the main championship game, and I'm not even sure it was a shot. <laughs> no, well, it didn't get up to the rim, so it wasn't. It was a block. It got blocked. We, our term is mushed. It got mushed. So I said, but any time the ball left her hand, um, it was perfect. So she was in the zone. We should have gotten her a couple more shots, but we also had 40 points in the paint. So you think about Motley heating up, Jessica Thomas sharing the ball, and 40 points in the paint. That's a nice formula heading into ACC. Well, if she was standing here, she might say, hey, what about me? Or maybe not because of her personality. But Erica Davenport wow. has been tremendous. Just a, a huge double-double. Um, I just think, like, from her freshman year, she got most improved her sophomore year. And now from her sophomore year to junior year, she's a great basketball player. She used to be a post player who ran well and worked hard. But now she's a great basketball player. Her, her shot charts expanded. Her assists are going up, you know, and, and, she, and she just killed the offensive glass in this tournament. So I'm really glad she made all tournament. So you go into conference play, and, of course, the first game in the conference is going to be Florida State. Played them three times last year. Mm -hmm. the last time you guys met was in the ACC tournament. All three games were battles, but you knocked them out of the tournament. We did, and you know, but they got us twice. So they're gonna, you know, look back at how they beat us two times, and and we're, you know, I'm gonna as much as um, you know, there's a lot of preparation to it. That's also one of those games. If you overcoach, four minutes go by, and you're playing chess, and the other team's playing basketball, and the game's gone. And so it, it's one of those games where I have to undercoach and I have to just trust my players. And I, they're just really executing at a high level right now, and I just need to stay out of their way. They, too, have a very veteran team. They do. I mean, across the country, you know, this is going to be probably two top ten opponents facing each other, at least top 11, and um, with tons of returning players. And so I just if you're a fan of basketball, you should come out to the Watsco Center and, and check this game out because the ball moves so well. Um, Sue Samaral is a great coach. They have a tremendous play inside. they got great role players. I mean, we got to take something away, mm -hmm. and you can't take everything away from them. They, they're not just going to shut down. I mean, they are a well-oiled machine, but you know what? So is Miami. You've made winning at home a real priority. Right. That's got to come into play as well. It needs to be, and, and we need to have a home court advantage. And it's tough not to have the students here for that huge game, but the community needs to come out and support us because there'll be so much energy on that basketball court. It will, it'll be just a great time. It'll be a great moment in women's basketball in this community in South Florida. You know, for years we talked about your style of play, your defense, forcing turnovers. I'll tell you what's really fun to watch is your offense because the ball is really moving. You are hot potatoing the ball all around, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, I think your players 
are just as happy to get an assist or watch a teammate score right. as long as they set him up with a really nice pass. It is, and, and we, we have a goal. We want 65% of our field goals to be assisted. When we played at FIU, we only had nine assists on 23 field goals, and it just wasn't us. And we, I really got on the team the last couple of days and, and ripped into that for them. But I do think that um, that is one way to exhaust your opponent. You know, the ball movement, they, we make them guard north, south, east, and west. And we don't want to take a shot until we've moved them north, south, east, and west. And we're committed to that, and that's a veteran team. Where do you think that uh, unselfishness comes from? Is it what you just said, being a veteran team? Yeah, being a veteran team and realizing, you know what, we get to just move the ball, and the other team has to chase the ball, you know? And they're running, 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 and then they got certain matchups, and then they forget their scout. I mean, if the ball's moving so quickly, they might know their scout, you know, they know what they're supposed to take away from Motley, what they take away from Hoff or Hayes, but you can't think and execute that quick if we move the ball. So um, we just got to get to the free throw line a little bit more. But other than that, I've been really happy with our offense. Also, you, I know you made it a priority on turnovers to make sure you protect the ball, right. which you did in the championship game against Maine. Yeah. Well, when, it, when it's time to execute, um, we have. And we've done it against multiple defenses. We've had a very diverse non-conference schedule. By saying that, I mean you play a pressing team, then you go right back and play a matchup zone team, and then you go to a team that wants to dribble drive, and then you got a team that's got penetrate and kick outside shooters, and then you got a team that high lows. We've faced a lot in this non-conference, so we can do quick turnaround preps in the ACC like we're going to need. Well, you've got this great run going for postseason play mm -hmm. in the NCAA tournament the last two years, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I know that's a real goal of yours. Again, obviously, right. you passed the non-conference part with flying colors. Now they judge in, in conference. Part. Right. And, you know, that Kentucky game, the fact that we dropped that one might have been why we won some later on. So as long as we're learning great lessons from our non-conference schedule, um, the record is what it is. But the results have to come in the ACC. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? <laughs> no, I, I don't overcoach. <laughs> Trust my players. All right, very good. All right, well, Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, that's Katie Meyer, and we will continue on Hurricane Game Day right after this. We got picked fifth. That's great in the ACC. I know many teams probably wouldn't want to be picked fifth, but that just shows that, you know, we just got to knock some people off. And I think people know that Miami's coming for them, whether it's home, away, neutral site. We're, we're, gonna, we're coming for you and give you your best shot. Every night is going to be a dogfight. We're just ready to go. That's all I can say. We're just ready to go right now. That's Miami, they've been there before. How big was that? Miami and Florida State should be a great matchup. It will be a high-level game. Last year, the Hurricanes knocking FSU out of the ACC tournament. They played three times. The Knowles did win two out of three. 7 o'clock tip-off at the Watsco Center. You can see the game on the ACC Network Extra and the Watch ESPN app. Now, let's take a look at the other upcoming events here for the University of Miami. Coming up shortly from Orlando will be the Russell Athletic Bowl as the Hurricanes will take on the Mountaineers of West Virginia. And later on tonight at the Watsco Center, the men in basketball take on Columbia. Then tomorrow, as we mentioned, it's Miami and Florida State in women's college basketball. And on New Year's Eve day at 430, the Hurricanes begin play inside the ACC against North Carolina State. And the women are back at it on Sunday against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame That'll be a 3 p.m. tip-off with the game on ESPN2. The bowl game coming up tonight, Miami and West Virginia should be a good one. The Hurricanes are looking for their ninth victory of the season. West Virginia is looking for their 11th win of the year as well. Miami and West Virginia from the Russell Athletic Bowl. That game is coming up shortly. Thanks so much for joining us. For Katie Meyer and Jim Laranega, I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time right here on Hurricane Game Day.